I know the DJ. Do you? Oh, we are back. Wow. Wow. I, I, I almost forgot how to use this shit. But we're back four weeks off, month off. Sorry for the wait. But we appreciate everybody uh, bearing with us, being patient with us as we take this break because we really fucking needed it. So do the drop. Welcome to episode 37 of But I Know the DJ, a podcast discussing all things DJing, music, nightlife, business, and pop culture through the unfiltered opinions of host Snacks, a.k.a. The Hunter and William Hung, powered by Dope Entertainment. Uh, no guests today, but after a month, um, you know, I do have some things I want to talk about. Some are actually, actually really, really important things that um, I want to shed light on and uh, make sure are acknowledged. Um, and, you know, part of that is the break that we took, uh, the full team, the Dope Entertainment team. Um, dope promotions, everything, podcasting, clubbing, you know, entertainment, all the stuff that Adel's doing. It's he's adding new shit as the weeks go. Um, you know, there's a point where we all kind of looked at each other and we we're like, holy shit. You know, we just kind of obviously dove into the um, entertainment podcast media space and, you know, we're very excited and, uh, you know, we're met with good positive uh, feedback and support. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, outside opened up kind of unexpectedly and we had to dive right in. Um, you know, our team, um, you know, me being the host and uh, Ada being kind of the visionary and producer, Phil being, you know, um, on uh, camera work and audio and being um, a producer in that right now, newly added Tim. Shout out Timmy. Um, Tim is out here as well, but, you know, while we were working on, this podcast, and, and they all work on other podcasts as well. There's a full podcast stack for Dope Entertainment. You know, we also had to do the nightlife stuff. And then it, some of us individually also had day jobs as well. So it just kind of became a lot very quickly. Um, and so for the sake of kind of, you know, mental health and not burning ourselves thin and bandwidth, you know, we kind of all, like I said, looked at each other and we're like, let's, uh, let's take a break. And it's one of those things that neither of us really wanted to do because we're all so insane, um, especially because it ne wasn't necessarily planned. It was kind of like within a week or within a couple of days, you know, we decided on it. We didn't make a, a formal announcement or anything like that. And uh, we kind of just disappeared and uh, people were obviously asking about it and whatnot. So I appreciate you guys, you know, being interested enough to care, I guess. But, you know, <clears throat> for the sake of us not uh, burning ourselves out. You know, this was a break that was necessary. I think Phil's been in the hospital like three times in the last month. I don't know. <laughs> like, for all different reasons. Um, so, um, you know, it's just it just got way too much. Um, and, uh, you know, it is important to kind of take a step back and kind of reprioritize, realign. Um, and also all, all my guests kept fucking canceling on me and shit. It was just getting very, very annoying. Um, but this is something that I do appreciate having and have grown and you know i do appreciate having a platform to be able to discuss certain things and um i beyond that i appreciate the fact that there's people that want to listen and that contribute and you know that respond so please continue doing so please continue engaging with you know the content that we are putting out whether it's instagram or you know reviews or likes on to the um individual episodes or anything like that your kind words or even you know difficult feedback you know tough criticism, constructive criticism and everything like that. You know, we are a continuously evolving entity. And so we want to continue to be better as we build and have more content coming out. And so ultimately the umbrella point of where I'm getting at is, you know, mental health, especially in the nightlife industry, you know, it's something that we've touched upon in the past, but it's something that's important. And now that we're a couple months back outside, as they say, it's something that's really hit us pretty badly. Um, you know, lack of sleep, trying to juggle everything, prioritize everything. And, you know, it's not only just the work that we're doing, but also, you know, our lives, our families, relationships, um, maintaining good health, physical health. It's tough to balance a lot. And, uh, you know, as adults, it's something that we try and maneuver 
but it is something that we all deal with. And the, but I know the DJ team definitely dealt with it and felt it. And so that's something I did want to acknowledge. Again, thanking everybody for bearing with us and being patient. And if you're listening to this episode um, after our month hiatus, I appreciate you heavily. And as we're shifting gears, moving into some more musical stuff, more lightheartedness um, as of today, this is Tuesday, August 3rd. I believe this will be dropping next week, so we are a week behind. But um, as of today, um, Bad Bunny and Aventura dropped a collaborative record, Volvi, which uh, for those who don't speak Spanish means, it means like forget, right? Hold on. What? Doesn't it mean forget? Why am I second guessing myself? The fuck does Volvi mean? Where's my Google Translate, bro? Tim, what does Volvi mean? You don't speak Spanish, do you? You don't speak Spanish. Yeah, I didn't think so. Why am I second guessing myself? Hold on. Ugh, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, it means it means to return, come back. What does forget mean then? Wow, I'm really show, I'm really fucking up. Olvido. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. I mean, y'all hear it. But anyway, um, you know, big collaborative record. I mean, we think about the, you know, biggest artists in Bachata and then, you know, the current biggest Latin artist period coming together. Legends upon legends collaborating with other legends and uh to be honest, the song's really not that good. Um Unpopular opinion, maybe. I, I actually, it's not a bad song. It's most. It's more so that one, what you're, what we're comparing it to, and two, what it should be. Again, legends upon legends collaborating with legends. The song should be automatic song of the year, maybe song of the summer, kind of late, but should be able to make its run. Is it going to get tons of play? Absolutely. Is every Bad Bunny stand going to say that it's the best song ever? Absolutely. But I mean, let's let's do the obvious comparison. Um, AAO by um, Don Omar and and um, Aventura from way back when. I mean, legendary song. You know, you, I could drop it right now in a Latin party and it would go crazy. Um, you know, very legendary song. And I don't think it compares at all. Um, maybe it has to grow on me. Again, it has been just one day, so I'll give it that. But. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on uh, Instagram and social media about people being like, yo, this this song should be better than it is. Um, and uh, I've seen some polls, and people are agreeing with that as well. I feel like this might have me come off as a hater because we've talked about Bad Bunny in the past. I am a, I am a bad, bad Bunny fan. Um, you know, but I'm critical. I'm critical about the state of Latin music and reggaeton as a whole, as we know, if you listen to the podcast. Maybe I'm caught in my youth, in my old ways. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. But I digress anyway. Um, I'm sure it's going to be, you know, I'm sure it's going to grow on me. Obviously, I'm probably going to play it this weekend. But I think it could have been better. Shout out Aventuro, though. Shout out Romeo. Another thing that I did want to talk about, and uh, this is going back to a little bit of this more serious stuff, um, is actually kind of, um, you know, this is a nightlife-centered podcast, um, but we also talk about real shit. You know, we, we do get pretty serious, and, um, you know, this is something that I think um, has been a long time coming in terms of a topic for this podcast, um, and is something that came up um, on my Facebook over the weekend or actually yesterday, and ended up getting a lot of traction for obvious reasons and I think was some, is worth talking about because um, it is very real. It's very serious, um, and um, it all started from a Facebook post. Um, I won't say who posted the Facebook post, just um, I do think that they're worth um, being protected for any reason, but I will say who it is about because it is important that we're all aware of either, you know, DJs or promoters who are working with and then uh, patrons, especially women, understanding who you could be possibly around. So I do want to create some kind of awareness in that sense, um, but also kind of shed light into something that is pretty fucking real. Um, and so I'm going to read this Facebook post verbatim. And I 
think it's going to be very clear in terms of what we're talking about and, um, you know, what we should be kind of being a little bit more considerate about as we go out, you know, week to week. I'm seeing, <clears throat> you know, you get liquor in the system, music, the lights, beautiful women, handsome dudes, like this shit, this shit can get mis- mis- misconstrued very easily. So I'm going to read this Facebook post. This is posted yesterday. Quote, unquote, I, do, I don't even got allegiances to these clubs, to any of these N-words no more, so I don't even care. Alvin Kasul, this is Alvin of uh, Drip Events, whom he tagged at the time, was on some fuck shit and was drunk and being physical with a woman last night. It's not the first time he's been accused of such activity. I can attest to that. And he should be held accountable. I agree. We can't be out here trying to have a good time and people like him in the community out here trying to pillage the pussy. It's not okay. You need to seek help, therapy, or the right person would stomp you out. Money man, businessman, promoter or not, your job is to provide the vibe, not make the people feel uncomfortable to walk into these establishments because you want to be a coochie crook. Get it together. Unquote. Very heavy stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of kept my eyes on the post um, kind of as the day went on because it did get a lot of traction. Um, I'm going back to the post right now um, and kind of looking kind of where it's stu- where it stands right now, at least. And um, again, this is from yesterday. And as I as I scroll down this person's um, this person's uh, page, I'm noticing that there's actual actually women writing on his wall. Tim, when's the last time you wrote on someone's Facebook wall? It's 15 years for me, maybe. It's not really a thing anymore. And there's people writing on his wall. I don't even know if that's still the term, but that's that's how I know it. Writing on his wall. Thanking him for shedding light on the person, for shedding light on the situation, and for shedding light onto a topic that's actually very, very real, as, as I've been saying. Um, and so the post, uh, 50 shares, 50 comments, 184 likes, you know, and a lot of the likes are, you know, other men being like, oh, wow, you know, respect to you. And, um, you know, it's, it's easy for men to turn a blind eye and to support another man in terms of defending them against a woman. And I think um, is the reason why women still feel unsafe or, you know, can't sometimes don't even want to go out because they feel so unsafe because, you know, men are going to take the side of the of the men. Um, so it's good to see that, you know, there's other men on this post kind of being like, oh shit, that, you know, it's real shit. And we appreciate you for, um, calling them out. A lot of the women are actually, uh, in these comments talking about their experiences with this person. Um, one of the comments, thank you person who posted it. I met him once and he tried some shit, brought me back to a place I never wanted to go again. I went to X venue in X city with my friends and he persisted. I go upstairs with him for a quote unquote dance. He got too close and wouldn't let me walk away. Kept trying to pull me into a dark corner. I got away and back to the floor ASAP. I left after that, you know, and it's very, you know, I was reading all these comments and, you know, as a man and not only, you know, just a man in nightlife, but a man with, you know, I have an established kind of brand or personality or position, whatever we want to call it. So I don't really worry about these things. Um, I feel very privileged and very lucky. Um, But, you know, if we look at the bigger picture in terms of nightlife, you know, how we sexualize women or use women to be able to attract or deem that uh, a night is good or a night is better. I hate... (sighs) seeing my name on a flyer where like the main image is just like some random model, some random woman. And I get jokes from other people. Oh, is she going to be there? And I'm like, Oh, that's so funny. But it's, it's true. You know what I mean? You start thinking about it and it's like, you know, obviously sex sells. We know that, but at the expense of the patrons, maybe not. Personally, I like it better when my face is on it. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) You know, why are we going to have some random model that won't even be there? But that's just me. 
within the comments, um, like I said, um, other women were uh, posting um, actual text conversations that they've had with Alvin. One of the, I don't know how recent these were, but one um, starts with them saying, was nice seeing you last night. You know, very typical thing to say after a night out. This woman is responding, I don't fuck with you. I don't fuck with any of the shit you tried to pull last night. That's not cool at all. He responds, what do you mean? Call me. The woman replies, trying to pull me out the club drunk to your car or whatever. Alvin replies with what? Woman replies with, I wasn't that drunk. I know that was your plan. I'm not dumb. Alvin then replies with, nothing like that. It's completely 200% of misunderstanding and my apologies on that. That's how I roll, lit or not. It's difficult. And since then, the, um, you know, the accused or really the, the person who's been shed light on has uh, deleted their Instagram. I mean, deleted their Facebook. Checking for the Instagram now. Woo. Looks like, I don't know if it's been reported or deleted, but no avatar or can't really even load onto their page oh no they just removed their face from the wow they removed their face from the uh from the promo page so i think they're feel they're definitely feeling the backlash they're definitely feeling the um you know what happens when their name is attached to uh to um you know their promo page or the event it's real shit um and and you know i hate to remind everyone but you know Reading this stuff reminded me of um, the death of Jazzy Correa in 2019, which is crazy because when I was looking back onto that, um, onto that story, I, I didn't realize that it was literally just two years ago. It felt like ages ago, um, and unfortunately, it was very, very recent. Which shows, you know, that this shit isn't, you know, this shit isn't that new. This isn't just happening post COVID or anything. This shit's been happening, and so for those who don't know. Um, there was a man accused of kidnapping and murdering 23 year old Boston woman, Jazzy Carrera, uh, may her, may she rest in peace. Um, and it was just a fucking insane situation that was very, very unfortunate leaving a Boston club with this man, you know, I'm sure. And whether it's intoxicated or drugged, you know, or both, um, and ended up being, um, you know, she ended up being like abducted by this dude from Providence, you know, um, she never made it back home. And then, you know, obviously once, um, you know, her family started getting concerned and, and uh, put a search for her and whatnot, a missing person, you know, they start once they started going through the cameras, uh, there was, a, I think there was a shot of the man um, leaving his home after, he had to carry her into her home, leaves his home with two suitcases and she's not there. And then they drive and he ends up getting caught in like Delaware. Where she's, I'm pretty sure, like, if she's not just in the trunk, she's, like, in the bags. So this dude was, like, obviously insane, you know, and it's dangerous. And this is just, you know, what, you know, this is just a 23-year-old girl at the time where she just wanted a night out in Boston, in our hometown. And things like this happen because of these crazy-ass dudes, whether it's, you know, them just being crazy from jump or maybe they feel entitled to you know, what they consider fun for the night and then things go awry and they kind of panic. You know what I mean? Like whatever the case is, whatever the scenario is, it's just, it's fucked up. And it's very, very sad to see where it's something, you know, we think of nightlife or we think of going out as something that is supposed to be so fun, so positive. But yet there's these things that literally happen on a weekly basis, on a daily basis that make it way more difficult for the women in our lives to be able to enjoy it the same way that we expect them to. And I think it should be uh, kind of our duty as men for those listening that we protect them and that we recognize these things and that if we do see them in the wild, that we say something and or do something. There are different things that we can do. Um, obviously, you know, not trying to, um, you know, get anyone that is ultimately crazy hyped up for them to be able to act out or anything like that, cause a fight in a club or anything like that. But you know, whether it's a passive thing to do or, you know, really getting in between saying something, whatever the case is, if there's a way that you can help, you should definitely do so. Um, you know, obviously we have security around, but you have to understand there's 500 people in a club and 
team of like 20 dudes trying to be security. You know what I mean? They can't look at or watch at every single thing. And um, it's something I wanted to talk about, something I want to bring up. We do have, you know, while most of the listeners for this podcast are male, we do have some female listeners and I appreciate you all. And um, I hope that, you know, I'm able to at least not represent you is not the right word, but, you know, I hope I was able to at least shed some light to something that is very much a reality to a lot of you. And so, you know, hate to be super heavy, but it is something I did want to talk about based on, you know, something that's happened in the past. And seeing this yesterday was fucking wild. And, and like, I know Alvin. I've played for him many times. He's one of the first downtown promoters that booked me. And in reflection, I noticed that he was always kind of, you know, creepy. And I've heard stories from women that I knew that were like, yo, your man's is fucking creepy. And, you know, like I didn't really do anything, you know, and it it had me thinking a lot. And so I'm, I'm quite reflective. And um, I just think ultimately we do need to protect our women in general in nightlife and outside of nightlife. And, um, you know, make sure that I think just as people, as as Americans, I don't know, that we protect each other. Because life is fickle, life is short, you know, and nightlife is kind of a lot of people's gateway of, of escaping their daily issues through work or through family or whatever the case is. So we should make sure that it remains fun. It remains positive for everybody. So that's my spiel on that. Um, You know, know, we've been talking about health as wealth and, and and mental illness and, um, you know, being able to protect each other and whatnot. You know, me personally, um, you know, trying to make those differences and uh, progress through nightlife um, outside nightlife for those who know, you know, I am an avid runner to an extent, I guess. Um, did sign up for the first my first half marathon in Miami in February. You know what I'm saying? I'll take that. There's a reason it had to be in Miami. <laughs> I'm not, if, you're, if I'm going to go run a half marathon, it's going to be in Miami. And when I finish that half marathon, I'm running straight to 11. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's crazy because... Um, I've been to 11 once before. Tim, you ever been to Miami or 11? Yeah. It's wild. It's, 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 I've been to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went on like a Tuesday. So like, it wasn't like crazy popping, but it was still popping. You know what I mean? And I've been to both strip, strip clubs here and in, only in Massachusetts and only in Florida. Um, not a big strip club guy. Not going to lie. Not a big strip club guy. Something about throwing tons of money at women that won't have sex with me is is pretty wild. You know, something that doesn't really tickle my fancy, but what's up? (laughs) Tim says basically bottle service. Oh man. When you put it like that, you're fucking right. Yeah. 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 No, it's okay. Oh my. I mean, it's very difficult to talk to myself. So the fact that you're here, Tim, I really appreciate it. Um, Tim says it's pretty much boss. Jesus Christ, you're fucking right. That's how my girlfriend said that. <laughs> oh my god, you do have a girlfriend. Oh, she is. Yeah, I can't. What? <laughs> Tim, get on, get on, get on the mic. Get over here, Mike. So, you know, I'm not the oh, fuck. Which 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 mic is that? Four. I still don't know. You know, I don't necessarily need yeah, one minute. Yeah, I don't need the whole high profile, but I do like I feel like we I just ended up talking to you just because you're here and I need someone to talk to. Thanks for having me on sex. Yeah, of course. So it. Tim big fan. I'm a big fan of you for years. So what Tim, if you don't know, at Timothy Mo, That's right? Me. On Instagram. At at Timothy Mo. At at yeah. Ex- yeah, yeah, exactly. At at Timothy Mo. On Instagram, uh, just I mean, he's been part of the team, but officially, as far as the entertainment part, just joined the team. Yeah. Um, but in psh, you've been in. I mean, Ada picked me up when I was doing Storyville. Yeah, 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 way back. Yeah, yeah. We met through Ross. Yeah, so I've known you for. Pff. And then, like, we kind of intersected. Because yeah. I was going to other clubs after I got exposure through Storyville. Yeah, but uh, how long have I known you? I don't fucking Six know, years, man. maybe. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, since since those eight, uh, like 16, 18 nights, 
you know, and like Middle East and shit. Yeah. Maybe like five, six years, maybe. Yeah, let's just say that. And um, so you've been in you've been in nightlife photography. Yes. For a long time. Nightlife media. Jeff. Nightlife media. It's because you do video. Not I mean, very good, but I do video. I mean, you're here now, you know, recording me and yeah, stuff. So you know, I mean, you're easy to record because you're very easy on the eyes, my friend. Tim, <laughs> you have a girlfriend, man. Don't make me fuck it up because I will. <laughs> um, but uh, I know you. I know you got like she's new. I guess. I mean, yeah. Like you recently started dating, right? Yeah. From what I've seen on like Instagram and stuff. I met her on the RV trip. Oh really? Yeah. That's that's. We were hot. talking because she worked at she worked at uh, Icon Venue Hava. When it just opened up, when Hava just opened up, yeah. then uh, Matt Martell and Zed yeah. from Pasha, they yeah. scouted me when I was doing Kingston Cuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hava. Right, and right. Allegedly, right. she saw me running around. And, was and she was like, oh, he's hot. Yeah, and then we actually like actually started talking during the pandemic, and then uh, she's from Austin, Texas, and we stopped by Austin, Texas when we were on our RV trip this spring, and that's when, and that's when you like met? Yeah, that's when we met. So she's still in Boston, is she yeah, in Boston she's now? Yeah, uh, she's, uh, she's at Icon Venue right now, yeah. So I probably like know her. Yeah, you've probably seen her. Yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Has she like mentioned to me at all? Like, oh, he's no. Good? She loves. She loves you. Really? Yeah. Big fan. Oh she wow. The, she thinks you're the best DJ. <gasps> and I did not. I did not put that in there. Are you really? That's, that's all her. Oh that's all her. Because you are the best DJ, boy. <laughs> oh man. I don't want to like put her name all over. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, no, no. But uh, oh, this is her. <laughs> oh wait. I need another picture because I feel like I think I know yeah. she is. This is just for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, getting, sorry, guys. We're, we're, we're having a like, we're legitimate one-on-one right conversation. Um, but, oh, wow. I love I love nightlife relationships. I know. I love them. It's great because we get off work at the same time. I don't yeah. get jealous about anything. Yeah, because you, you have a mutual understanding. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Me yeah, I mean, for those who are OG listeners, when we had Tori Bottle Girl, she was my f- second, she was my third episode. Actually, let me go through these flicks real quick. Oh. Jeremy is currently looking at my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. When you say it like that, it's weird. Okay, I need a. I mean, I'm I'm at I'm at Icon this this week. Me too, buddy. Which day? Friday. Yeah, I'll be there. I'm she's, with. She's gonna be there too. She just got her. Oh, let's we, let's all connect let's all, and then just yeah. yeah, yeah okay, like, perfect. Anyway, um, nightlife relationships. Um, yeah, if you're OG OG listener, we had Tori. Uh, she's a, so she's also a, a posh. I don't know if you know Tori. Pasha Bottle Girl. Yeah, I remember. Um, I think I met her. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, she's great. She has her own podcast. She's great. Um, shout out to her. And uh, you know, we talk we talk extensively about just relationships in general. Where like, if one of them is in nightlife and how difficult that can be. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, you know you being on the photo side. Um, you know, we had Simon on the podcast, and yep. but uh, he's a little different, I guess, because he like I mean, travels he, and yeah, like does like he's, he's big media company. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, he's not like like in there like. Getting a girl's ass shaking on him and shit, like it's kind of different. I mean, he still is, but he's getting yeah. A lot more for, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, have you, yeah, I get what you're saying. Have you experienced issues in the past being a photographer? Like, oh is, yeah, is no, it tough? in previous relationships, hundred percent. Yeah, because because like, gr- girls low key do love the photographers. I feel like yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if it's because I look like Party by John Lee, but like, ass <laughs> 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 But <laughs> yo, yo, John Lee is a fucking legend. Oh John my, Lee is yo, a character, man. Yo, every yo, if you are, he always has yeah, ass shake. If you are, if you are a Boston socialite, you know who John <laughs> Lee is. And the thing is, you know, I was talking. To, yo, I don't know if he's ever gonna watch this. I'm, I'm probably gonna send this to him. And I'm say hi. John, John's my hi. fucking guy. John, like, yeah. like every time I see him, I get super happy. And I was talking to him about it. And this is actually real shit. So photographer, or really just anyone. I was talking to him and I was like, yo, you're a really busy guy. Like he does like three events in one day. Yeah. Like multiple times he's a doing, week. He's doing New Hampshire. He's doing yeah. New like Hampshire. he is like all over the place. And, and you know how I feel like photographers, like they kind of stay within like a circle in terms of nightlife. Yeah. He, he'll do like white people shit, Afro events, Latin events, hip hop events. Like he does it all, yeah, and, and that's kind of kind of what I'm trying to do too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's similar to DJing. You want to cover as many bases as you can, yeah. get as much work as you can, get as much money as you can. And I was talking to him, and I'm like, "Yo, like you're a really fucking busy guy." And he was like, "Yeah," and he was he was like, "But I don't think it's because I'm like more talented than anyone else." And I was like, "You know, whether or not that's the case, it is because he he has made himself 
like a like a like a like a like a like a social nightlife entity. Like a cult of personality. Almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he walks into a room. Like there are a lot of photographers that they walk in hood on. Mm. All black. All black, and yeah. they're just kind of in the shadows. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like in the mix, yeah, and doing I, I videos. Strive for that as well. And and he and, I, and he talks to people. He gets people's oh, Instagrams. Yeah. Like oh, he, yeah. he like, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's and it's and it might be to him it might be oh it's just me being me or whatever the case. But I'm like yo, like I, even I see it. I'm like yo, you are doing more work than maybe the next guy, and that is being reflective, reflected in the gigs that you're getting. You exactly. know what I'm saying? And um, you especially know, he, with nightlife in particular. You know, you can control. Yeah. You can't control the talent that you have coming in, but you can control like how much network and how how yes. much of a personality you are, like working yeah. in the space, that type of environment, which is something I've really honed on over my years of working in that mm-hmm. personally. Yeah, and you're crazy young, still. I'm 22, man. I'm not crazy young. That's very fucking. You're technically <laughs> supposed to have been in nightlife for a year. <laughs> you're very young. I I've only been in nightlife for a year, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Dude, if I if I could, <laughs> dude, if I could be twenty two again, oh my god! Like and now I'm getting like now I'm getting like nightlife old. I'm starting to like get there now. I mean, I, I'm getting nightlife old a little bit. Like, you not, feel not, it. Not, you yeah, feel it. Feel you it. feel I it. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been in it for like yeah. five years. Yeah, like I was talking to um, Eli. Yeah, who's about to turn twenty one. That's right. And like two weeks. Yeah, and he was like shout out Eli. Yeah, shout out Eli. And he like he was so he called me. He was like, "Yo, I'm trying to get a table at wherever you're at." Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, "Wow, the day has come." We were 21 and he's like, yeah, it's weird. Cause like, I got to do all this, like, you know, moving parts and stuff. But I've been in nightlife for like five years and I'm like, yeah, I don't, this is weird. <laughs> That's kind of how I felt. That's exactly how I, I was actually talking to Eli about it. That's exactly how I felt when I turned 21, like right before the pandemic, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it's supposed to be like a monumentous milestone where I can like go to and It was just another but birthday. Was, yeah. You know, I was, was kind of clubbed out at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're kind of over. It was the first time I went as like a real, real patron and like not stressed that people would find me out and like arrest mm. me outside of the club. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. But like, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of like the whole pop and bottles experience and like buying tons it of I've already had that. Before. Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I kind of robbed myself of that experience, like working in it for so long, especially mm-hmm. so young. Yeah. I was talking to this, um, to this girl who, um, she was saying how she's from New York yeah. and she was saying since she was like 17, 18, she was, um, the door girl yeah. they just collect, you know, so she, you know, she wasn't out in the club so she could technically work, uh, you know, all night, every weekend. Like she was just collecting yeah. money, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, but it's also New York. So she was like, I would leave at like 6am and yeah. like, I just have these ridiculous shifts and stuff. And she was like, now nah, I like, don't even like, I don't even want to walk into a club. Of- yeah. Like, go out that late. Yeah, 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 and I'm just like, damn. Here's like a like, similar thing with bartenders too, because like you know, like younger bartenders, especially that since they have to deal with the drunk people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had Laura here, the bottle girl, yep. star tender. Um, she, first of all, I I still don't know how old she is. Like, I I, I don't want to ask, but like. She, that is like a good, she, a good, she, I don't know. I mean, she's like a little know. baby girl, but also like okay. very mature looking. So like, she could, she could be thirty. See, she could that, be that's eighteen. A cop at answer, you know what I mean? Like, sorry, <laughs> no, but I, I don't. I truly do not know. I, all right, all right. I'm, I'm positive. I'm older than her. Yeah, but like, so she mentioned like in like during our conversation, like very nonchalantly and like passing, she was like. She was like, yeah, I've been like in bottle service since I was like 16 or some shit. And I was like, what the fuck? I was, 16? Ma- maybe 18. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It was very I young. Mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised 16 because, you know, clubs. It was very young. I know that. And I was just like, how old are you? Like, it was... <laughs> yeah. It have you ever my se- mind doesn't comprehend you. Have you ever it's seen... Never, um, it's been a lie. Have you ever seen the movie The Orphan? No. You should see it. It's I fucking will. sick. I will, just for you. Without right. spoiler. All right. Oh no! There's no way to not spoil it. There's no way to not spoil. It. I can't spoil it. It's such I'll a just, good movie. I'll just watch it, but I'm gonna let you know. Yeah, yeah. I, you're gonna well, watch how's, it. How's this gonna relate to our conversation? Just you have to watch it All because right, watch because it. literally the way it relates is is the twist of the movie. So if I explain it, you're, then there's no point in watching just, it. This is just extremely vague, then. But you know, I'll take your word for it, and I'll I'll, I'll watch the damn movie. The Orphan. The Orphan. It's a horror movie. I don't really and like... I'm going to watch it. I'm going to think back to this moment yes. on the podcast. I'm and you're going to be like, oh, oh I get it. That's what yes. Snacks was talking about. Yes. All right. A thousand percent. All right, bet. I don't watch horror movies a lot. I don't really like them. The Orphan was popping. Oh, you're going to make me piss my pants, bro? I can't take horror movies. It's... it's. I'm still really curious on how this is going to relate to what Dude, we're just watch, watch it like All tonight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. Like, this has to do with Laura? <laughs> not her specifically, but but like, 
I okay, say less. Say less. I'll do it. I'll do it. I guess just people get into nightlife. Yeah, people get into nightlife at an early age. Yeah, you're one of them. You know, and then by the time they're like old, it's like and for well, some, you and do, you're still you, very young looking. You gotta as well. do it. I'm gonna stay young looking until I'm forty, and I'm gonna age like fifty years, bro. Yeah, Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, like a lot, like especially the girls and stuff, they get really young. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild Cause actually because you, you, you gotta have the energy for it, and yeah, like especially that's if you're true. In school. That's you know, very true. A weekend job. I mean, that's what I did it. Yeah. When I was in school or I was do, I had my day job and uh, it was just a quick way to make it easy, like $400 a week. Yeah. Which, which like when you're in college goes a is a way. lot of fucking money. Especially if I don't have to work the day job anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's real shit. I mean, it still didn't really work because I dropped out of college like twice. <laughs> but. <laughs> but I mean, it's true. Like there's not a lot of, at least on the female side, I, there's not a lot of women that are like. Maybe past early thirties, you yeah. know what I mean? Because, like you said, it's more fast paced and high turnover rate. You know? High, no, high no, turnover don't rate. Talk to me about this. Talk to my girlfriend about it. Yeah, but but I mean, but there's more men that stick around. Yeah. For whatever reason, I mean, I mean, the requirements in terms of the jobs that we have are very different. Yeah. Um, like I let my body go a long time ago, and here I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but um. Uh, I did want to talk about um, Eleven real quick, because um, I had a crazy experience, out of body experience at Eleven. You had an out of body experience yes. at Eleven on a Tuesday. Yes. So. So it just so, I wasn't thinking. So we were out on a Tuesday. So like. I'm gonna move this camera. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, do your thing, bro. So we were out on a Tuesday, and, um, you know, we were doing our thing, like hopping around bars. Like that's the thing about Miami. Like it's, it? what's up? I don't know. How do you feel? I mean, if if I'm forcing you to talk, then you know. Yeah, say I'm fucking man. This is the first day back. Uh, I I did have a guest scheduled, but unfortunately, they couldn't make and it. Now it's me. I stole it. Yeah, but um, it's, it's talking to myself is hard, man. Um, and so we're just bopping around. Miami's great. Love Miami. Can't wait to be back. Um, gigs coming in Miami, by the way. Everyone, really? stay tuned. Yes, sir. Very excited. Um, bobbing around and the spot we were currently at was going to, was going to, I mean, it was like two, but like, we were like, we want to keep going. Like it's Miami. You yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. You, you can't keep going. So I was like, okay, like what is still going to be open? And, um, we saw 11 and I just, for some reason, didn't put it together. I think I was just drunk or something. And I was just like <laughs> this spot. Yes. Like, like what, if it's open, like I'm there. Oh, so you didn't even know about 11. No, I knew, ab- I knew about 11, but. I think in the moment I wasn't thinking strip club. I was just thinking like club. Club. Club that's still going. That's just still going. All right. And so I get there and I'm like, wait. Like like the second I get out of the Uber, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. wait. And so we walk in, obviously naked women everywhere. And I'm, and I'm just like, <laughs> like hey. and I'm just like, this wasn't like really the energy I was going for. Because like again, it's a Tuesday and like I just kinda Jeremy, want to like, I don't like strip club snacks. Yeah, I'm not a big strip club guy. <laughs> As you mentioned before. Anyways, yeah. go on. And so I was like, okay, you know, we're kind of like, you know, when in Rome. Yeah. I take like, I don't know, like $500 worth of wands or some shit like that. And I was yep. like, fuck it. And How many of you were there? Just me and my boy. Just you and your boy. Yeah. All right, we're. And so we get a spot right at, a, we get courtside seats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> right, right in up. the mix, right on the mix. And, you know, it's... <sighs> I think because I'm from Boston and, like, I haven't really gone to, like, many, like, like, I've never been to a Vegas strip club or anything and, like, no, really, haven't gone to many Miami strip clubs. Like, I'm I'm, I'm not fully in it. Like, I'm kind of like, oh, I still got to be, like, respectful and, like, you know, I'll throw money because, like, that's what they do. The whole but point like, is to be, like, belligerent while throwing your money, bro. Yeah, yeah, but I, but I was being very timid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's fair. I was being very timid. And I mean, you also weren't in the mood for a strip club, so I don't really blame you. Yeah, yeah. And right next to us is like this like group of like really fratty guys, like, and they're fucking mm-hmm. going balls to the wall. <laughs> like, like so, so there's yeah. so so they're doing rotations of two women, you know, dancing whatever, whatever, and 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 you know these again, Miami, like these are all stars. Like yeah. they they have they know what the fuck they're they know they know the psychology of it. They know how to play with your emotions. Like it was crazy. So. 
they're doing they're doing the thing where like they both kind of crawl to them. Oh yeah, and it's very close. Like they're up like in their face, making eye contact, making eye contact and shit. And I'm watching. I'm just like, <gasps> I'm just like, oh shit. And and these dudes are like fucking grabbing ass, grabbing <laughs> like fully like fondling them, like fully fondling, really them. getting like in really there. getting in, smelling that butthole, yo. <laughs> and and I was kind of like. <gasps> I was like, yo, this is kind of a force, like, like, cause, a force, huh? cause, cause in New England, like, it's usually like you can, etiquette. you can't touch, the, yeah. you can't grab you can't onto grab them, them, you, you know, you, touch you, they, they touch you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you kind of just like, let it rock. Miami, nope. Yeah, dude, it grab was a wild. Of ass and go n- but the thing go is, one of them, wild. one of them complained, like one of them yeah. like looked at one of the security, security. was like, yo, like tell them to chill the fuck out. And I was like, oh. This is, I was just like, happen. I was just like, I was just like, Dude, oh my God, like, out. I don't know. It was just a lot. And yeah. then, and so then they kind of like, look at me in the wad of money I have in my hand. No way. And I'm just like, oh my oh, God. And then they start crawling over. Yeah. And then they the literally, line. literally crawling. And they do this thing. I never forget. They did this <laughs> fucking thing where, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to try and paint the picture. I'm going to try and paint the picture. Right. So I'm sitting there, wad of money in my hand, kind of look, honestly looking fucking stupid. Yeah. Like I'm. I don't know, like people like see me as like the like, crazy party guy, but like there are times where like I'll get timid. I feel you know that. what I'm saying, and and, and this is one of those times. I remember there's two like crazy blonde girl. Every every woman in that building had fake tits, like you know what I mean. Like they all honestly, they all looked exactly the same. Honestly, they're investing in themselves. We we say that. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. investing. Yes, in themselves. great great way to put it. Thank you. <laughs> and they do this thing. I remember so. This is the thing that I will not forget. Tell it. They do this move. So like one of them. Put like crawl, yeah, cross to me. Face, she's fate like I could fucking kiss her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hands on my thighs, very close. And I'm kind of obviously focusing on her, and I'm like, oh, wide eyed, like just kind of. Yep. I, I think I'm like you know sticking <laughs> like, money in like her g like, string or whatever. Trying, you know what I mean? Trying to slip the ones out of the thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like <laughs> I'm just trying to pull like ones and like kind of like in her crevices and shit. I'm like yo, just yeah. I'm like sure you take the money, this. like yeah. And then and then as that's happening, yep. through the hole that's in between me and her, the other one. Kind of slips up, sneak attack. Yeah, like like, and it's like upside down, kind of like cocking her head back. So like, it's like both of their faces are like right here, oh my Lord. and then like, and then it turns into like titties in my face, and, and I'm poor just Jeremy's just like, I just want to get more drunk. No, yeah, yeah no, literally, I literally just wanted to keep partying, and now I'm like, I have these two women, and like, now like, I'm down five hundred dollars. There's dollars, yes. and strings. This girl's like upside down, in front and of it's me. like, I don't know what's going on, and it's the body contortion. It's the it's it's the it's the. Were you sitting down? Were you sitting yes, up? Yes, I was. I was sitting. The core strength. The the <laughs> like. I was just so like. I was like wearing two women, but was putting no effort. You, you feel the, what I'm you saying? Had the pants on and you had the shirt on. She was over. No, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but thing is, like, it's not like I was carrying them. Like they were, they were carrying themselves on me. Yeah. And like, there was just this point where I'm like, yo, like this is fucking crazy. And like, they're giving me the eyes. I'm like, they love me. You know what I'm saying? But that's what they want you to think. Yeah. And so I start getting this like very, like, like the bestial, beast, bestiality. You know what I'm saying? It's like the primal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I start, I start getting like it starts getting to my. How do I get them to? How do I bed them? Money. And yeah, I but it, it, I just start get. I just start like wilding. Like I'm yeah. just like, now I'm the one who's like, yeah, like oh yeah, like they're here for me. Like like I'm the fucking man. You fell for it, man. And then the money runs out. You fell for it. They you look in my eyes. Heart. They start rubbing me away, and I'm like, whoa, 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 where? You know what I mean? Gone. And I'm like, I hope you didn't go back to the ATM. No, 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 good, no. Good. And so I'm just kind of like, <sighs> I'm just like, oh my god. And it's and it, and like and like the dust settles. Yep. And I'm like, what just happened? It's like post not clarity without even. Knowing. Yes, yes. And and I kind of just get up because while this is all happening, yeah. my boy is getting a private dance. So I'm like, I that like this just like it it, just, it was just a very like uh, individualized lonely kind of <laughs> See, experience. You know what I'm saying? And so I kind of just get up, like I literally just like look around and I just like get yeah, up and thanks. walk away, and I just like kind of like look for my boy and like I'm back in like the lobby, and I'm like, I'm like kind of disgusted with myself. I'm just like literally post night clarity, bro. Yeah, I'm like I just lost all this money. I had I had a very out, out of body experience. I didn't feel like myself. And then my boy comes out of the cut, and I'm like, "Yo, like, how was it?" And like, he's kind of in shock too. Oh, really? Same thing. <laughs> yeah. He's like in shock, and I'm like, "Yo, yo, like, what happened?" And and he's like, um, "He's like, I couldn't do anything." <laughs> and he goes, "But she was doing like everything to me." 
You know what I'm saying? And 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 uh, and he. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna just be honest. I'm gonna just be super honest. Like he was, he was like, I, he was like, I want. It. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, wait, he was wait. like, he was like, I wanted to get like a blowjob. He was, it was too much money. <laughs> and I'm like, he yeah, dude. Asked. I'm like, this is Miami, dude. Like this is this shit isn't like this is real shit. He asked straight up. I guess During I don't know. Dance. All right, bold move, my friend. And uh, and then we kind of just looking. I'm like, I think we're done here. Like I, th- I was like, I think we've done enough. Like enough. Like damage. you guys were reborn. Yeah, and then and then and then what was worse is we walk out. And the air hits me, you know what I'm saying? And like I'm in this Stay Uber, and I'm air. and I'm just like, I don't know if I ever want to do this ever again. <laughs> but Miami 2022, we're back. Yeah, I will be there, an older, more experienced man, having just run a half marathon. Um, and have you ever been to the strip clubs here? No, I haven't. Don't. Only Montreal. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, after every after Montreal, everything's kind of a step down. I heard Montreal's popping. I've never been to Montreal. Bare titties, bare ass, baby. Mm. Natural or all fake or eh, mix mix whatever mix you mix want. Up. It's a progressive world up there. I heard, I heard. Yeah, I heard Montreal's popping. I need, I need, I need to travel a little bit more. That's the thing. Like Go to Montreal, bro. That's the thing. Clubs man. there are very nice and they're cheap. Yeah, I heard it's like a like an eighteen year olds. Like, I mean, yeah, because drinking age is eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it's like really popping. But the, for the like college the is right there in the town center, and they get they they do get pretty pretty wild. They mm-hmm. get creative with their clubs too, which is what I appreciate. That's that's what Boston really likes, and we've talked. I've talked a lot of it in length about you know the lack of creativity in um, Boston clubs, and you know Ado, you know bless his heart, you know listens to me and my ideas, and a lot of the shit that I like we come up with, like we can't, they don't get approved. <laughs> like yeah, and, blows. and I'm like, dude, like we got to do things that make shit cool or like uh, memorable or part of its regulations, but also like you know you should be able to get creative within the bounds of those regulations. So obviously, like um, you know, at Storyville and uh, 222 at Tunnel, like we were able to do like the pizza stuff. Yeah, and I was trying to bring that back, the pizza party, yeah, like it's a great time, and 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 they're like, oh, it's gonna be more for us to clean up. The pizza's a liability, and and I'm just like, yo, like. Like you've seen the floors like after a fucking like it's, you're tell me it's, it's gross clean anyway when they, when they got people popping champagne not even yeah that's right like I, I'm like you're you're gonna big sweep it anyway yeah. you know what I mean like so I was just like oh this is fucking stupid um if anything let them sober up with the pizza you know <laughs> but if it's like yo like and this is you know we've seen this like with yeah. feedback you know Storyville and Tunnel and stuff like that like it's it's one of those moments where like yo I I went out got a table and oh my god like there's fucking pizza yeah, like you know right. what I mean it's memorable though. it's memorable and it makes and I you like to believe like shit like that is what kept Storyville going for at least three years that I worked there you know before it closed down yeah we we were able to get we were able to do whatever the fuck we, we wanted we, <laughs> you and me were able to do whatever the fuck we oh wanted. my god yeah R I P Storyville I, I I heard that's um the person who's buying it is going to turn into like a like a speakeasy type thing. That's what I heard. Oh, really? All right. Which I think would well, be cool. That would be cool. One less basement club. Yeah. It was fun while it, fun while it lasted. Yeah, yeah. We still got Tunnel though, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Hava, I guess, if you consider that a basement club. No, no, no. I just, they definitely elevated it with, um, you know, it's rebranded and yeah, got yeah. and stuff like that. Hava's, Hava's dope. Hava's, Hava's, Hava might be my favorite room to play in right now. Really? Hava's pretty fire. You like that uh, lower dance floor? I like the lower dance floor, and I like the um, the DJ booth, the glass door oh, DJ yeah, that, booth. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. I really do like that DJ booth. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. bitch to shoot in, but yeah, nice you can't get to... you can't get a lot of. No, nah, no, nah, I'm a professional. <laughs> Got it all down. I just throw my camera in the air. And this so, because you do different kinds of photo, right? Yeah, of course. How does nightlife differ from portraits or from um, model you gotta, shoots? You gotta or... you gotta have the personality for it. You gotta be personable. Because if you're just that, as we were talking before, if you're just that guy that, like, ducks his head down and, like, tries to be invisible, um, you don't get good shots. You have to interact with the crowd. You have to, like, be part of the experience. At least that's what I try to do. Because that uh, warrants, like, better content for me. and for Because people are comfortable around people you. Are comfortable they want to smile you, for you. Because, you know, people are drunk. And, like, these, especially in, like, high-end clubs, you know, they, th- these are people that have, like, jobs. And, like, you know, they might mm. not, you know, if, if you're not warm with them, then, like, you know, this is like, oh, photographer, I don't know where the fuck that photo's going. Like, I don't want my photos taken. But if you if you warm up to them first and, like, be a personal character, that gives you a better opportunity to get better content. So when you say warming up to them, you know, you 
So let's say, you know, there's a table, like, that's definitely having a lot of fun, like, and yeah. you just want to get in there and, like, like what's kind of your approach? Um, You know, I just, like, I just try to talk to them, you know, do club talk, because, you know, music playing can't hear that much, but, like, you know, yeah. you, you club talk them, you say, like, <clears throat> or comment on something they're doing, like, you know, they pop the bottles, be like, yo, yo, let me get a photo of you popping the shit out of that bottle, or something. Hyping them up a little yeah, bit, yeah. Or be, like, do some funny shit, or something like mm-hmm. that. Get him warmed up a little bit. I was know? I was talking to John once, John Lee, legend, yes. <clears throat> and he was saying that um he would get a lot of like <laughs> he get like a lot of dudes being like yo yo like don't post it like my girl doesn't know I'm here. Have you gotten like stuff like that? Of course, it's fucking wild. I do honor that, you know. Oh yeah, but, yeah I respect yeah. it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you know, I'd rather I'd rather try and get the shot first and then have the shot. <laughs> but for also like establish trust because yeah. like I said, these people do have jobs. They have they might be at the club. They don't want to be known. Yeah, like or you know have people know that they're in the club. Sometimes I go to the club. I don't want a fucking photographer in my face. Mm. You know, just be honest with me. Don't be belligerent, but be honest with me. Mm. And like, you know, if you say no, there's like 10 other people that will say yes to a photo of them doing something. So I'm not too, I don't get too tight about it. I know there's a lot of photographers that like take unconsensual photos and stuff. I really don't fuck with that. <laughs> you know what, what I'm talking about? I mean, how, how do you, like, how do you know? Like what's, like give me an example or something. Uh, well, it's just taking photos of people, like taking photos of like, people in, like, really compromising positions. Like, some, like, girls, like, shaking their asses is great if you have their permission. If you don't, and they don't know your time, and you can tell because they take a photo, and then the girl's like, yo, no, 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 don't delete that. And then I see it posted somewhere. You so, know? so, you literally ask them, be like, yo, I see you shaking your ass and stuff, can yeah, I take and photos? Yeah, and a lot of them just say yes. Wow. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like even, you can see it with the videographers. It's more apparent with the videographers because they got the light thing, so you can, you can see all yeah. the interaction. Yeah. Which I hate those light things, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I don't use them personally for my video, but uh, anyways, um, you like you can see that like uh, if you have have like a camera on them and you have the light thing on and it's clear that they're filming and they decide to shake their ass for the camera, that's cool, that's fine, and that happens all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they it's chose to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it, it's it becomes a problem when like uh, you do that and they're clearly uncomfortable and then they say no and then you you can tell it's like shitty because they keep trying to do it. For the same girls, and it's just making their night shitty. Like the yeah, yeah, shitty, yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. for sure. I see that a lot. Mm. And uh, yeah, I don't fuck with it. Photos is a similar concept. I have. Um, I I was talking to my uh, some of my DJ homies about this. And I'm curious of your opinion, or if you or if you dealt with this a lot, where DJs will hit up the photographer and be like, "Yo, like you did my night. One, I wonder if you can get me those photos." Yeah. Is that an annoying thing? No, that's my job. <laughs> so you're more than happy to be like, oh, yeah. so like me personally, like, I don't, I don't know why it would be a problem for any photographer, but it's my job to take the photos. So the, so the way that it came up with yeah. our, our, with our like group chat or whatever was one of the DJs did that reached out to a photographer and they just like left them on red and like, now if you do like the day before, <clears throat> first of all, for me personally and any other photographer, like talk to me like in person while you're there. Because I appreciate it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and then also, like, uh, just understand, like, uh, we have to, like, sit down and, like, do work. Yeah, on yeah. these photos. So, like. I see, like, Dan's post where he's like, I'm working right now. I'm yeah. editing four nights of, I don't of do, work. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want anyone I don't, talking to me. I don't post me. that shit publicly. <laughs> but just know that, like, if I do leave things unread, that is the reason I'm leaving it unread. It's because, you know, I get, like, at least 10, 20 DMs a night from brand new people. Really? That are like, yo, send me the photos and send me the photos. And then, like. And would you rather, like... I don't ha- want to have to repeat the same message over and over to 10 people. Right, right, time. right. And would you... Because, you know, I still do it sometimes if, if it's a new photographer or, yeah. or something like that. And that's fine. Like, don't take it personally if we, yeah. like, leave it on red. At least me, I try to respond to every single one eventually, especially when the photos are done. But I try and ask for the full album. Yeah. Versus being like, oh, only, like, go look for the pictures of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like... Like, cause I know you have the album link. Yeah, I know you have it. And so no, you're just trying to make this it is easy. What I, say. You know what I mean? say, here's the album link. Or right now, I do link tree in my bio because it's. Easy. Uh, so I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think that's great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and one, it, it creates more engagement for you. That's and right. I can track the engagement. More, yeah, it gets more people to your profile, and you know, it's I, just an easy way to you know, to just drop it for everybody. Yeah. Like there yeah. it is. Yeah. I I, I noticed when you uh, posted at least a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh, that's so smart. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna be doing. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, so I give them the link tree. They can see the night they were at. And I tell them, um, because I, I will respond to DMs about it. Uh, if, you, if there's a photo missing that you know I took, just reach mm. out to me directly. 
and then I will go back because I don't delete my albums. So really, and part of my part of my work is you know being able to provide you with the service that I was hired for, and you know wow. through that like uh, through that type of two way communication especially it's good for my business. Yeah, because it shows that I actually fucking care. So, yeah, because I do. Yeah. So if you, if I like miss a photo or something, um, I just look through. Sometimes I do miss things. Sometimes I cut photos that I don't think are good, but like someone wants that specific. Yeah, photo. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like sometimes so- someone wants a photo, but they don't want it in the public album. Right, so right, right. Reach out to me. I'll make it. I'll make it work. I'll make it happen. Wow, what a guy! This is, this is bare minimum, man. I feel like it's shitty if you just like, because I mean, I used to do it too. I used to just be like, photos here. Don't ask me where they're from. But like, you know, it doesn't take much more effort on my part. And it's just like, you know, I build, I foster better relationships this way. So you said you don't. You don't delete any of your photos, so you just keep them on hard drives? Yeah, until they either fail or, like, you know, I move them somewhere else. Oh, so I was going to do you still have, like, albums of, like, oh, when yeah, we I first, do. like, I have, met and I stuff? I have albums back to, like, 2016, my guy. Oh I have some God. of you. They're in They're in the cloud. I make sure wow. to save, especially every single every single Slacker show, every single, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, spring spring break, whatever the fuck yeah, that yeah. shit was called. Yeah, yeah, I have them. That's wild. I have every single Storyville night in my Google Drive. What? Yeah. Organized by year, baby. Yeah, dude, that's fucking awesome. I wish I was that organized. That's so dope, You though. have to be. You have to be. But even just, like, to be able to, like, reminisce. Yeah, no, I love looking back and yeah. see how far, how shitty I was back then. The and thing is, it's very- crazy because, so, before I started working with Ross for the Slacker events, like, I yeah. knew about the events, and I was, like, I would see them on, like, Facebook. I didn't know that, like, Ross was who he was. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I do know what you mean. Like, for the longest time, I was like, who the fuck is, like, who is... So like who is this guy? Who is Sonex? Who's this Sonex? I thought he was like a full adult guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I was, I thought he was like a TJ. And then you looked at him, and he was like, "Yeah, oh, this and, is a full adult guy." Yeah, and then I, <laughs> and then I fully met, him, and then I met him, yeah, and yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" And so I remember seeing your pictures, and I thought your pictures were sick. Like I, I, I remember being Thanks, like, man. I remember being like, "These are those events because of the photos." And I think my heart. And I think like, and, and I think people don't realize that they do this, but. Like, like for instance, like pretty ugly was like almost exclusively, exclusively using Dilvin, for example, yeah. at at a point. Yeah. And I remember like I associated them together. Yep. Dilvin with, with like yeah. pretty ugly, you know what I'm saying? So right. then by the time I got into pretty ugly's events, I remember the first time I met, I met Dilvin and I, and I know I remember the first time she, she showed up. It was like my, I think it was the first night I ever DJed for pretty ugly. And I just see her show up and I was like, oh my God, there she is. And she's like, about, Dilvin. And now, now that's I, the one that takes the cool photos. Yeah, and I was like, I'm about, I'm literally about to get yeah. Dilvin photos, and I think that's and and, and you know that's kind of how how I felt when I met her for the first time too. Yeah, like yeah. And, and and you know it's oh shit, you know Tim's on. I'm gonna get Tim photos. Like like it's 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 nah, real shit. Not at that level. No, yet. no, no. <laughs> like you know, and, and that's an interesting thing that like I don't know if other people think that that way. You know, I know I do. Like, I know that when I first met Dan. I do when I see other photographers. Yeah. When I first met Dan and when I first met Eric. like Especially I was, Dan and Eric, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, I was like, I'm about to get some fucking fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and a uh, shout out to those guys. Phil, I didn't, I never, I, I didn't, I've never seen Phil's photos when I met him. Shout out Phil. Yeah, Phil. And then. Phil, where are you? And and if Here. if you go, <laughs> if you go on my page right now, like, a lot of my latest photos were from yeah. Phil. Like. Um, and they look great. Yeah, he kills it. Um, it's sorry, that was my intern, baby. Really? You didn't know that he was your intern. He was my intern. Wow. He reached out to me for nightlife stuff, like two, three years ago. Yeah, because when I go on his page, he has mostly like um, I don't know the terms like um, portraits, like portrait and um, yeah. cosplay. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I saw it and like, and they were very um, like softly edited, I yeah. guess. So I was like, I don't know how his shit's gonna like rock in in like nightlife. And I got his like first batch, and I was like, "Yo, this is yeah, fire. fire!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Us I, photographers, man, we're versatile. You, it's you it's be. it's it's cool, man. Like it's it's such an art that like I obviously don't understand, but I can appreciate. You know what I mean? Because well, it's, it's I like value the, it's it. like the it's like the it's like the intersection between all things music, whether it be DJing or producing or like emceeing versus or like like making songwriting. You know, it all intersects. Mm-hmm. Same similar thing with media, videography, photography, and the different fa- facets of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in uh, my last post uh, on Instagram, someone commented like, "How do you have the best photos in, um, like, in the game or some shit like that?" He says something we all like that. Love you. And well, well <laughs> but th- what I wanted to say, I actually looked at that comment for a while and was trying to decide how to answer. And the real answer, what I wanted to say, was like, "I'm just really fucking nice to everyone." Like at the end of the yeah, day, you like, are. You know what I mean? And with, I'm like this with bartenders, with a lot of security, with photographers, and like videographers. 
Um, and at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if you want people to, whether it's pri- whether it's prioritize you or make sure that you look good or make sure that, you, you know, you're held down, like, it's because you got to be nice to them. Yeah. Like, you know, Dan will DM me the night before Icon or something and be like, yo, I'm shooting for you. Like, look, make sure you look good. And half of it is he's joking, but also he's like, yo, like, make sure you look good because I want to make sure that you get your, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And, and it's because, you know. I make sure he's respected. I make sure people tag, you know, every time I see him, I give him a big hug. Like, and it's always been like that for you. You, yep. you always make sure I look good. You know what I mean? And it's just like a circle of life. You know what I mean? Versus like, oh, I don't know this guy. Last time I saw him, he was a dick to me. Like, yeah, snap. Maybe that's all he gets. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying. So, and like, you know, I like yeah. to think that you know, people like my work because I'm also like very friendly with every, every single person. I'm yeah, with it, every single it's, person it's like crazy that. how far being friendly can go. Can get it you. Takes you know it pretty I mean? far because a lot of people are dicks, man. Yeah, <laughs> dude, especially in nightlife, man. Yep. Like it's, yeah, it's 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 terrible. But um, yeah, man, I, I, I it's it's interesting because uh, how how have you decided to change your style over the years? Because it has changed. Um, it's like uh seeing people that I thought were really good and then trying to mimic it. We're even talking to them right now. I'm like uh low key. I'm biting Dan style a little bit. Who's <laughs> <laughs> all. Uh, Oh, and also Phil's style. I don't know. I've been, like, switching around a lot of styles because you can get, like, pretty... There's a lot of creative liberty in nightlife stuff because if you just get, like, photos of people and make it look, like, typically nice, it lo- it, it looks really flat because, like, you got, you, got the, you got the flash and, like, it makes everything kind of look the same. So mm. in terms of, like, the colors and, like... In terms of just the editing, I'm not even getting to, like, uh, how I actually take the photos and what I actually take photos of, but um, in terms of the editing... It's just you can you have a lot of liberty in like how you like make the colors pop and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's the biggest thing I switch around when I do my editing. Yeah. In terms of actually taking photos, I like to. Uh, I'm trying to like, that's always trying to evolve. It's like mm. trying to take photos of different situations in the club because you can always take photos of, like groups of people. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like weekly, when you're when you're like, yeah, it's gonna be a pack night in the same club. Like, how do you how do you get how do you make, make it diverse? Club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you know, it gives you a lot of. It gives you a lot of freedom to like get creative with things, but at the same time, you also like um, it take it takes effort to think outside of the box like that in a place where it's like mostly like the same shit's going on. Yeah the 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 person who um, I first kind of acknowledged or noticed like color it was um was Eric. Yeah. Um, like way back like when he was doing like the Sonya stuff. I consider him one of the best. I I I don't know how he's like. Like last time I saw him, I was he was like, "Yo, I'm struggling to get work," and I'm like, "What?" Like I'm like, "You're so talented." <laughs> like, um, so this is um at Fink shot it on Instagram. Everyone check out his work. He's super dope. Please Book him. Um, but I remember like he would he would take photos and like all the colors were like different than what was actually happening. Yeah, you know what I mean. But in a good way. Yeah. And like like I would be like blue, and like this this like light would be like orange, and like this is, that my hat would be green, and like. And it's, I can't explain but it, but it. it worked. But it worked, and yeah. like, and it just made it look so unique. And 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 that was he was the first one. And then I when I started when I met Dan, he was doing it, but in a different way. Yep. Where like him, it's like it's always like blue. The blues. Yeah, the, the blues, blues and, the and like the yeah. And it was very interesting. Um, and it's honestly like when I started like like next thing I knew I was like I'm friends with like ten really dope photographers and like was able to kind of compare you guys not in like a who's better but like more in a sense of just your different styles. And and, and and it's one of those things where, I mean, same thing as DJing. Like, if you're not into it, into it or in it or know anyone who's in it, you kind of see it as a very passive thing. Oh, they're just taking photos, and I guess this photo looks cool. Oh, it's like a high-quality, high-res photo. Same thing, like, oh, yeah, like, they DJ, like, they play songs. Like, they play the songs I like, and it's loud, and it's I dance, and I'm drunk. But when you really boil it down and you really focus on the style or – the presentation. I know for photographers, the thing that I really appreciate is turnaround time. Oh, your turnaround time sometimes is fucking crazy. Um, obviously, when life is not killing you, you know what I mean? Um, but there's certain things like that where it really fucking matters. And, and, it, and it can, like I was saying earlier, like, can really almost make the night. Like, I know people that want to go to certain nights because they're like, yo, like, those photos be fire. And every time I go, I get fire photos just for, like, my IG. I know the promoters feel that way. I know the DJs feel that way. And it, and it becomes a part of the night. Like I, I've, yeah, like I said, like when I book some DJs, they're like, oh shit, I can't wait to do your, you know, dopes nights because y'all have like some of the sickest photographers, you know what I mean? And, um, it rings true. And I think that's part of the mammoth that Ado is trying to put together where like, if you come to a dope night, you get the best DJs, the best, the best promoters, media. the best media. And it's just People like, really say that. 
Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Well, I mean, I've had people be I've heard, like, I've heard people say that. I mean, I've people, ha- no one ever says it to my face. That's why I, I mean, I've had people <laughs> say like, oh shit, like, like, cause I, cause so what I'll do is, you know, I always get the album yep. and I'll go through it, you know, get my shit first, obviously. But then like, if I see like anyone I know or any of my friends or like, can't find a reason to like talk to a girl that I've always wanted to talk to, but now I have her photo. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I'll say them all, and then I'll I'll send them individually to like people. Yeah. Like yo, yo, there's some dope shots of you, whatever, and they're and like usually they're like yo, like it's always like when I come to y'all's nights or like the photos are fucking crazy. You look great. Yeah. And now and I always saw them like it's because we get like the best of the best on like everything, you know, and it really just elevates the night. So come to dope promote. To yeah, dope my entertainment job, my job is being appreciated. I love that, uh, dude. I mean, you know me. Like I only go for high res. Yeah. Photos like you got it. That's yeah. why. That's why they they fucking pay us. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You you guys kill it. But um, Thanks. um, where 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 are you? Where where should people find you? Where where can they find at Timothy Moe's photos? At at Timothy Mo. In terms of nightlife stuff, um, my link tree in my bio will have all the nights that I got, um. <clears throat> And I usually do turn around like two, three days. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to optimize the workflow a little bit. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to do it 48 hours after the night. Um, but yeah, yeah you, you'll find it there. If you don't see your uh, thing in the album, just reach out to me. Or just reach out to me in general. You know, I'll give you a response. I won't leave you, I won't <laughs> leave you on red. What uh, venues are you shooting for these days? Right now, uh, Icon venue. Um, and then come... Saturday, I mean, not Saturday, come September, hopefully BG Goldrum. That's what I'm gunning for. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing hopefully. rumblings about. Yeah. Um, if, it, if it's open by that time. Yeah, yeah, right. But uh, yeah, dude, I'm just wherever wherever the wind takes me, wherever <laughs> these club owners want me, man, I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, mainly Icon icon Venue, at least for the next month. Not bad. Yeah. I need to be more on more of your nights, though, buddy. I know. I know. I miss you. Like I that, la- the other night was like the last, like the first time I saw you in like a month, bro. You just did me last week, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are those photos done? <laughs> I'll be done tonight. It's because I'm busy doing this shit with the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tr- trust me, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, and also that, also that side room booth kind of sucks taking. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, like. You, you know. killed it, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. We're, we're I'm back in there this week. Are you? Are you yeah, you there? I am there this week. Yeah, so. side room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dan's gone creative with the with the fish eye. Yeah, yeah. Because like that, yeah, that booth. I'm gonna steal it from him. Yeah, that booth is so back. rough. I'm gonna take his fish eye. Yeah, because like you have to, because it's so narrow it's so and long, narrow, yeah. that, and like you can't, like you can't get in front of me. I can't get in front of you. My only option is to the right of you, Be, the or the left, left of, of me. And then yeah. like now, all of my photos are like just like me turned around looking at the thing, and like, I can you know just I mean? bring my pole and just kind of go into the bar and just go. <laughs> just fucking yeah, I, I I miss like the. The yeah, straightaway, no, yeah, the, the straight main, away the main stage is definitely more optimal for photo taking. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and make it work. Thank you. I can't wait. Um, but first podcast episode back, I hope, I mean, this was Woo! super unplanned. I mean, I, but yeah, this was, I yeah. mean, getting into the, the, I like photos the thing is, is, is a super dope. Is something that thanks I, for having I me on, man. Dude, thanks for, I mean, I'm finally on here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> After that, your four week hiatus. Very unplanned. Um, but no, I appreciate you and your side. I appreciate you and your friends. I appreciate and your you, friendship. man. You know and I love you. I love you. Um, but um, as, as always, follow Dope Entertainment Official on Instagram. Follow at But I Know the DJ on Instagram. Follow at Gimme Snacks on Instagram. They can follow you at At Timothy Mo. Make sure you show him love and any of the uh, photographers that we had mentioned um, on this podcast as well. Always tag your photographers on all posts. Please do, please do. Always show them love. Follow we appreciate them. it. And like all their uh, content. And we will see you next time.